beautiful creatives. Welcome to Beginner's Mind, Art Mind. I'm Linda and it is the end of the day. I have just finished editing the video for this that you'll be watching. Well, it'll be last week by the time you see this video, but it is um, the Blick loose painting video. Just finished editing that, getting ready to get it uploaded for you on Friday. Super tired. I can't believe I'm doing my intro looking like I as tired and pale as I am right now. But you know the, you guys know, those of you that have been around for a while know, the only thing that could get me up in the studio to film this late in the day after a day of solid working, videoing, editing, no time for arting is an unboxing. It's unboxing time and guess what? This is a total, one of these is a total surprise. One of these is a gift from one of my viewers, Fran. And I am so stinking excited to open this. I've been waiting all day. It came, um, I guess my husband brought it in this morning from the mailbox and he kept saying, aren't you gonna open your gift? Aren't you gonna open your gift? And I said, I can't. It's a gift from a viewer and I have to open it on video. So I'm gonna open this. And then this, if you remember, I showed in my last video, I'm pretty sure I showed in my last video, I have some um, companies that have reached out to me and they uh, have given me some products to try. And so I'm going to, there's two products in this box and there are some more products on their way. And I'm going to, this company has asked me to only review one of these products at a time. And I wasn't allowed to review them until February after the trade shows were done in the United States and in the UK. So this, this week, I'm going to pick one item out and not look at what the other item is. And it is Paul Rubens 14 Colors 5ML. That's what the box looks like. And it is, it is, it is in Chinese. <laughs> so I don't know what it is. No, I do know what it is because they told me what it is. I believe this is their brand new set that they have launched of um, what they call neon watercolors. And if I'm right, we'll find out. This is a really nice box. This would be a gorgeous thing to gift. Look at, can you see the embossed Van Gogh eyes on there? I hope it's showing up. It's really gorgeous. But drum roll, please. This is not gonna open easily. Ooh, this is packaged really nice, you guys. So on top, it has the little Paul Rubens color chart and a whole bunch of information in Chinese that I can't read, so I can't tell you anything from that. And then colors on the back. So there's a lot of colors in this line. And then a swatch sheet with color names in both um, English and Chinese. And then it's got a pretty little black cloth, a nice little cloth over the paints. Woo! Woo! <laughs> They're falling everywhere. Okay, let's try that again. Let's try to do it fancy like the fancy YouTubers do. Numbers two. Ooh, fancy. Isn't that pretty? This would make such a pretty gift. I'm just dropping these all over. This is, but these are their what they called them when they contacted me, they told me um, they were their neon watercolors. What it actually says on here is it's an opera set. So it's, you know, you think of opera pink and opera red, you know, it's very bright colors. Um, I did look it up online and I found out that some people said that if you put it, if you paint with this and then you film it under a black light, that they will um, glow. I don't have a black light, so I can't prove that to you. And that is not an application that I would be interested in using. But we get to take a look at these this week. And um, I'm thinking, remember how I'm trying to use up my sketchbooks? What I'm thinking is, 
is taking out some of my black paper sketchbooks and trying the neon colors on the black. I thought that would be fun. I'll swatch them on both the black and the white for you guys, but I thought it would be fun to do something on the black. And the interesting thing is, if you have been watching my videos for a while, you know Paul Rubens reached out to me at one point for testing their acrylics and I said no. And then um, I forget how it even came back around. I think they sent me another email describing their acrylics to me. So I did try the Paul Rubens acrylics and I loved them. And I am just hoping against hope that at some point they offer them in single colors, you know, uh, open stock, because I love them that much. I would definitely keep a stock of them on hand if I could get them open stock because they're not shiny. They were gorgeous colors. I loved the way they looked. They had some transparency that made it really great for layering. So when they reached out to me about the neon, what they called their neon watercolor set, I again said no. And um, they reached out to me about another product, which is still in this box, and I'll show you in another video. And um, <laughs> I'm such a goof. I love stuff. I love new art supplies. So um, I wrote them back. I told them, yes, I would take the other thing that they offered me. And I wrote them. I thought about the black paper when we. I did the... Um, sketchbook video the last video that i posted i thought about the black paper sketchbooks that i haven't been using and i thought what fun would it be to pope to do neon or opera colors on the black paper so i wrote back and said yeah guess what i changed my mind i'll take them so i actually i'm thinking i'm probably gonna like them based if they're anything like how much i loved the acrylics i'm thinking i'm gonna like these so this is going to be really fun to play with Okay, so that is the first surprise. Thank you very much, Paul Rubens, for always stretching me and talking me into using art supplies that I think I wouldn't be interested in using. And then you kind of come back around and convince me that they are things that I would like. And again, I love this packaging. This is, this is a hard, beautifully made box wrapped in black paper. This is gift worthy for sure. So we're going to play with that this week. And this one we'll put away for another week. And this gift. I got to pull my chair up and sit down. Okay, this gift is so sweet. This is from the sweetest person. The absolute sweetest person. This present is from Fran. So for those of you that don't know, I have wish lists on Amazon and Blick. There's links below all my videos. Occasionally, I just throw things up there and, and occasionally people, viewers, buy me a gift as a thank you for my videos. A lot of times I completely forget what I threw up there and it's a total surprise. This is something that I just threw up there. It is the WSD SketchUp 5.6 millimeter mechanical pencil. It says size four by 0 0.54. Um, let's see, let me open it. I gotta get my knife. Fran is the sweetest person. I think my camera's crooked. And no stranger to struggles on her own. She has such a generous heart and sends me the sweetest notes. And when things started to really, the, the, the great tragedy happened to Dawn and I last year and we were trying to figure things out. She was always sending sweet notes that she was praying for us. And oh, it is, it is, look you guys. Another one that is gift worthy. Look at this gorgeous box. Look at this. This is, this is a treasure. This is a treasure. Oh, it's got a little snap on it. Look how nice it's packaged. It's got the little foam. It's got instructions on how to load the leads, I'm assuming, how to operate it. Oh my gosh, look how lovely. This is gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that fat lead. Oh my gosh. Is it focusing? 
Look at that beautiful fat lid. This thing is so gorgeous. Look at that fat nib and you push this and you can push the lid back in, push it out. Oh, if I remember correctly, I think there was something about the lid being a sharpener. I've got to look into this more and I'll let, I'll look into it more and I'll let you know, but I'm pretty sure it said that the lid was a sharpener. There's something in there. I just can't see what it is. So I think it has its own, ooh, its own sharpener. This is nice. Thank you so much, Fran. Really, thank you so much. This is a beautiful gift. This is a beautiful, beautiful gift. Wow. Isn't that gorgeous? And even this, the outer box, what a great birthday gift for an artist this would be. Or a Mother's Day gift, Valentine's gift. Valentine's is coming up. I wonder if this video will be up. I think it will. Thank you so much, Fran. That is absolutely gorgeous. And I am going to start playing with this tonight. I think my camera is sinking. It's sinking. Oh my gosh. I set this up so fast. It's absolutely ridiculous. Then you guys are not going to believe the second thing she bought me. To put this knife away before I cut myself. Oh my God. Look. Remember the Helen Birch books? Let's see, what video was it last week or the week before the video that these were in? I'm not sure. It was either last week or the week before. I will link the videos that I, uh, um, the freehand book and the watercolor book, I will link in this video. And I will put links to these items down below my video so that you can, clickable links that you can click on. But look at this book. Oh my gosh, this is going to take more than one video to showcase all of this because um, I got an email from Paul Rubens the other day that they're back from the trade shows and that I can do my review on this. So I will be swatching these. I don't know if I will be doing a painting too. So it all depends on how much time this takes up. I think these, this I probably will use in this video when I do a drawing for swatching this. This probably deserves its own video. This probably needs to be in its own video. Silly childish girl that I am just had to drop in here very quickly at the end of the day to show you these beautiful, beautiful gifts because I could not wait one second longer to open them. These are such beautiful gifts. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mwah, so much, Fran. That was so very sweet of you. Makes me so happy. Um, you know how much I always love the gifts that you give. Thank you, really wonderful way to support my channel. Thank you so much. And then this is going to be a really fun stretch for me. I don't use opera colors. I'm a fan of muted colors, so um, this is gonna be fun. It's, it'll be a good, fun challenge and a good stretch for me to come up with some ideas that are very different from what I normally paint. And since I'll be using them, obviously because they're opera colors, so the light fast police are gonna jump on here and say, they're not light fast. Probably not, no, they're opera colors. So that's not the point really there. I don't care that they're not light fast, not at all, it doesn't bother me because I'm gonna be just using it in a sketchbook. Either that sketchbook or maybe my Stillman and Burn, or maybe I'll try it out on both papers. We'll see. But um, yeah, it doesn't bother me. It won't bother me that they're not light fast. This is just for, for playing around with. And then, you know, I make prints of my artwork and I sell prints. I have been on a hiatus from that over the winter to take a break while Don and I figured out, you know, what we're going to do about all these things that are going on with our life right now and our health. But at this spring, I'm thinking I probably will go back to making prints of my sketchbook paintings that will be for sale. And I will reopen my Etsy shop and sell the prints through Etsy. And what I do just to make it easier for me is I offer one size, I offer eight by 10 prints. And um, yeah, so uh, if you see work that you like uh, and you would be interested in a print, reach out because in the next couple of months, I may start making prints of my work again because the prints were really, the prints were a good bread and butter item for me. People really enjoyed buying the prints. 
So, and I, and they, people emailed me that they were very sad when I had to take a break from selling prints and closed my Etsy shop. So that is something that I'm definitely considering. If there's enough, if there seems to be enough interest in it, I'm definitely considering reopening my Etsy shop and offering prints again of some of my sketchbook work. Okay, let's dive into the video. So I'm getting a late start on this, but I really could not make myself wait another day because I really wanted to try these out. At least swatch them and see. I just think this packaging is so pretty. Anyways, I think I'm going to put these into my ceramic palette here and then swatch them out in my swatches book on the white paper. And what I did was I tore one of the black pages out of this Soho sketchbook because I'm thinking I might want to attach it into this swatches book after I swatch them on black. So this is, uh, let's see, this paper is 90 pound, 150 GSM mixed media paper. So we'll see how that they swatch out on this. All right, I'm going to get these paints into my palette and then we'll swatch them. I'm so excited to see how these come out. I have absolutely no idea what to expect. Okay, so I haven't completely worked out how I'm going to do this yet, but I have written out the names on um, the white sheet of paper and the black sheet of paper. I'm not sure if I'm going to go through and do the full white sheet of paper and then the black or how I'm going to do it, but we'll figure it out. We'll wing it. We're used to winging it. These. Did I say what the size of these tubes were? They are 5 ml, so they're little teeny baby tubes. Oh, they're sealed. Oh, this is, I squeezed. This is going to make a mess, probably. Oh, oh, yep, had a feeling. Shouldn't have squeezed it. Ooh, they are, they are bright. You know what these would be really fun with if you did use them with a, a black light is like a kid's um, birthday party or a Halloween party. I could see making some fun cards or signs with these really bright colors. I think it would actually be really fun to do some cards with them. Those of you who know my paintings know how uncharacteristic these really bright colors are of me. So um, this is a good stretch for me to try to figure out how to work with something this bright. I'll do the last two on here. And opera green. Hmm, maybe I'm going to wish I squeezed out more for that black paper. Let's see. Interesting texture. They, uh, it kind of reminds me of gouache. This is going to be opera golden next. Wow, these really are neon. These are fun. This is opera orange. Things are always darker looking through my iPhone than they are on the paper, but I don't think these are gonna come across as truly bright as they are on um, the camera, on the video. They are so unbelievably bright. Okay, the next one is Opera Orange Red. I think these colors just make you happy. Oh my gosh, they're brilliant. You know, in the middle of winter, like if I was out painting my garden and I was surrounded by these bright flowers, 
um, that would be a different story. But I am in the middle of stick season here in Vermont. There's nothing but blues, muted blues and grays and browns surrounding me. And these are just candy for my eyes. These are just amazing. Opera light red. Golly, they glow. You don't even need a black light. They just glow. They do remind, they are, they are kind of like, um, you know, they say the karataki is sort of a combination between gouache and watercolor. That's kind of what these uh, feel like to me, except I like the binder. Whatever the binder is used in these compared to the karataki, I, I prefer these. I like the these remind me more of the kind of paints that I'm used to. These have a really nice feel to them. Opera Red. Wow. Opera Rose. Yeah, I think they are kind of like a combo between gouache and watercolor because I'm not like getting, I'm messing with them a lot and I'm not getting any, um, oh no, splash, splash. I'm not getting any cauliflowers. Watch, I'll get a giant cauliflower in that now, but it seems like you can kind of mess with them for a while. Boy, they lay down really, really nice. Okay, this next one is Opera Pink. Boy, I like how, I like how these lay down. Opera Peach. Did I do that right? That doesn't look like peach to me. Hope I didn't get off somewhere. This one is Opera Violet. Wow, this is fun. <laughs> oh yeah, opera purple. Boy, it would be really fun to do some color mixing with these. I have two water containers here, so I clean my brush in one and then dip it in the other one for spreading them out. And then the last one on this tray is Opera Ultramarine. Hmm, that's nice. That's real nice. I wonder if that's going to granulate. Some of these look like they're already granulating. Ooh, I really like the granulation that's happening. I might get a big cauliflower there. I put a lot of water in there. Oh, I do like the ones that are granulating. Okay, and then there's two more, and then I'll switch over to the black. Opera Blue. It's like a cobalt blue. These take a lot of abuse. You can just keep poking at them, it seems like, and they don't cauliflower, but they do granulate in a really pretty way. I'm not sure if that's coming out, but I like it. Opera green.
just re reminds me of like stepping from gray gray winter into really bright and beautiful spring and summer okay i'm gonna let these dry and then i'll show you those but before my paints dry completely out i want to go do the black page it's going onto this paper quite different than it did the other paper. I wonder if I should have tried the paper from the Stillman and Burn. I could always try to do some on there. This is just acting very differently. It's... Or light red. Ooh, slipped. Oh yeah, this paper. This might not have been the best choice. It's getting all waffly. Opera red. Oh, I wish it was showing up as bright on the video as it is. It's just not. But it is bright. Opera rose. Pink. Opera Peach, which doesn't remind me anything of Peach. These are the happiest paints. I think everybody should get a set of these paints in midwinter to paint away the winter doldrums. At least everybody who lives in northern climates. This is Opera Violet. And Opera Purple. Opera Ultramarine. Opera Blue. Opera green. I might not have enough of the opera green left. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I really don't. I should squeeze a bit more out to be fair. Look at these colors. Wow. I can't wait to see what this comes out looking like on the video. I wish it looked brighter through my camera. They would just make you so happy. I have no idea what this New England girl who loves muted colors is going to paint with these, but I'm already getting some ideas that I think would be fun. Totally out of my element. So I'm going to let those dry. 
and let's see what these ended up looking like. Wow, these are so bright. I hope it's showing up. These are seriously gorgeous. The blacks are still drying. That's fun. They, um, some of them did granulate nicely. I'm going to try taking my camera off the stand and hand holding it to see if it shows up better. These are like tropical paradise colors. You know, these are, um, yeah, this, I need to paint something like tropical, tropically inspired. I actually lived in Hawaii for a short time. After I graduated high school, I went out to Hawaii and just remember some of the gorgeous flowers and things out there. red granulated. I like this color, this peachy color. Opera pink. This is pretty. Okay, well these are, the black ones are still drying. The black paper definitely mutes them compared to the white paper. Okay, so that's the swatching part anyways. I'll put a link to this set down below. And yeah, I gotta think of what to paint for you guys now with them. These are just too much fun. And thank you, thank you for sending these to me, Paul Rubens. Yeah. Okay, what to paint? I gotta think about it. So the video that I made for the Paul Rubens watercolors has gotten way too long and is going to be divided into two parts at this point because the second part is so long, even longer than the first part, I thought I would show you these paints in a little bit of a loose wash application because the painting that I'm going to do for you in next week's video is using these paints in more of a gouache type application, laying on the wet paints heavier. These I let dry out in my palette and then I added some fresh paint as I needed it, but the dried out paints wet really nicely and I was able to um, get nice washes with them. This is the Stillman and Burn Epsilon, and it's just not the best for watercolor. It waffles and it um, watercolor lifts on it. I probably should try to do another painting with these on better paper, but they, I just wanted to be sure that I included in this video that you can use them in lovely um, wash applications. And that they blend out beautifully. I am going to stick this little bit of video onto the end of video number one, part one of the Paul Rubens two-part series. I mean, I'm just enjoying these paints. I'm actually having a hard time reining myself in. I keep adding more video to it, so who knows, there may have to be a part three at some point. Who knew that I would enjoy neon watercolors so much? Kind of crazy. But this, like I said, this was crappy paper to do watercolor on, so I would like to try them on a better paper. But even on this crappy paper, I'm impressed with how they did with washes. I just wish Paul Rubens made their products in open stock. That would make me so happy. If you're listening, Paul Rubens, make your acrylics and watercolors in open stock. I actually should probably double check on that they are not still available. I should uh, 
I should look into that. Okay, so I couldn't stand to waste this leftover paint that I had in my palette. So I did another painting, and this time I did it in this little sketchbook. And I always forget the name of the sketchbook. I've put a link to it. It's in my Amazon favorites list. But um, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I needed to do one more painting. Just sort of a loose wash of leftover colors. Leftover Paul Rubens colors. And I will stick this on the end of the video for part one of the Paul Rubens video. But I'm just having a lot of fun with these paints. And like I said earlier in the video, I forget if I said it in part one or part two, if you have a set of bright colors, like these neon colors, you can always mix more muted colors. If you buy a set of muted colors, you can't mix brighter colors. So I just, that's why I feel like these are so versatile. If the, you're not bothered by them not being light fast. And again, Paul Rubens does have light fast, professional quality watercolors. These are just the neon colors the opera colors, and of course, opera colors, most people know, are fugitive. But for just in your sketchbook and for illustration artists and artists that make prints like I do, it doesn't, it doesn't affect it really if they're um, fugitive. Anyways, enjoyed working with this. Needed some time to myself to just do a really quick painting and I can never stand, when I have, you know, little globs of watercolor left in a palette, I just can't stand rinsing it out. So I needed to, I needed to make good use of it. Okay, if you're still here watching my most loyal viewers, type opera in the comments below the video. Thanks for watching. And if you did enjoy the video, please remember to like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Thank you. See you next week.